Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost as we continue in this season of following Jesus and his ministry. But today's readings kind of point us to asking the question about what does God want for for us and for this world and um, what's God's power about? And so for it's good for us to be here today. There's a bunch of stuff going on, so uh, there's plenty of announcements in your bulletin, but let me highlight just a few things. Uh, float work continues this week, uh, beginning this evening, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday night this week, uh, starting at 5 o'clock or any time thereafter. Uh, this week, we will be in the fellowship hall working on the, uh, the fluffing, and so if you can come and help, uh, that would be great. But again, you'll meet in the fellowship hall this week. Uh, because we have Vacation Bible School this week, uh, Monday through Friday from 6 to 8.30 uh, in the church basement. We're excited about yet another fun week of VBS. Um, last I heard, the count was at 66 kids who will be attending, which is awesome. It's a lot of little kids, though. So, what are you all doing this week? <laughs> Hopefully, hiding, yeah, someone said that. Um, hopefully holding us in your prayers, but uh, if anyone would like to come by and help and just kind of help guide, herd, you know, whatever the word would be, uh, we, have a, we do have a lot of volunteers, but we could always use more help, and so we give thanks uh, for the week that is coming up for us. Uh, one request, though, uh, for our crafts, if anybody, because we have so many kids, we are looking for some more uh, mason jars or similar, you know, pickle jars, any kind of a glass jar about that size uh, for a craft this week. You won't get it back, but if anyone has a, a few jars you can spare, we need them by Wednesday. So thank you for that. Again, this is a month of clothing as we get ready for the back-to-school clothing drive. So uh, if you have donations of gently used clothes, you can bring those to church uh, during the week or on the weekend. Um, we'll be collecting our, we'll have our undies Sunday here in a couple weeks. Uh, so if you can, uh, if you're out and about shopping, if you want to pick up some packs of undergarments for kids and youth, uh, we'll be collecting those as well. And also those uh, shoe boxes are in the back uh, if you'd like to make a, a contribution towards the shoe vouchers to help a lot of the kids get a new pair of shoes for the year. So thanks for your help with that. Uh, speaking of the Alliance, uh, in two weeks on Saturday the 24th, we'll have the annual community fish fry. Um, it's been at the Baptist Church, but this year it's going to be down at the JC Gardens. Hopefully a nice night we can sit outside. Uh, but open to everybody, free will offering supports the work of the Alliance. Um, and if anybody can, is willing to help, um, there's not a herd of kindergartners to do that, but if anyone can help with a fish fry uh, with the other churches, that would be great as well. And finally, on your offering card, again, are those options uh, for some possible trips we're thinking about, uh, trying to figure out what those trips might look like, whether to Branson, to the Sight and Sound Theater, or uh, the Springfield Cardinals game. So those are of interest. Please mark those, and uh, we'll be in touch to figure that, those plans out. Are there other things to share as we continue our time? Then let us rise in body or spirit as we continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life, and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, 
There is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from Amos chapter 7. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 85 responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord.
Yay! <laughs> We've got one! Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm good. Wait just a minute. I think we got one more coming. <laughs> Go have a seat, Colton. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story here. I'm kind of wondering if any of you have gone and done something you probably knew wasn't right, but you did it anyway because all your friends were doing it. Let's just say, let's do a pretend story. Let's say there's this older lady in your neighborhood, and she has her yard all decorated up with all these little gnomes. You know what a gnome is? It's a little figurine, has a funny hat. They're kind of cute. And she has figurines of birds and animals, all kinds of stuff in her yard. And one day you're playing with a bunch of your friends in the neighborhood, and they, one boy says, or girl, who could be a girl, says, um, hmm, I think it would be really funny if we went and took Grammy, old granny's figurines and hit them. We'll go get those silly gnomes and we'll go hide them someplace. And don't you think that'd be funny? Well, some of the kids were saying, yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know. That sounds mean to me. I'm not sure if I should do that or not. But because everybody else was and they were all on board, you didn't want to look like a chicken or something like that. You know how they get. So you went ahead and did it, but you felt really bad about it. And what do you think you should do next? What do you think the next thing is to do? What do you think? Probably uh, go dig them back up and go put them right in the right spot. Take them back and put them in the right spot? You think maybe you should tell your parents that you did that? Yeah, and then maybe you should go to the lady, uh, we'll call her Granny, and go to Granny and say, hey, we did this, and I'm sorry, and I'll put them back, right? So you had a choice in that moment, too, to say, stand up and say, no, that's mean. You shouldn't do that. And so we could get in bad trouble, and that could hurt old, old Miss Granny, and she would be so sad. So that's your moment, too, to stand up and do the right thing and be a good person, a good Christian, a good friend, and do the right thing, and tell God, and let God guide your uh, activity instead of your friends, okay? Let's say a little prayer. Can you repeat after me? Dear God, please help us remember to do all the right things for the right reason. And to, God, and to live by your guidance. Amen. Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. 
But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and Herod protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to her, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. The girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, that's always a fun story to tell. So I wonder if you'd be willing to let me tell another story. I don't know why I ask. I'm going to tell it anyway. (laughs) Some of you have heard the story actually already, but um, our family not long ago went on a camping trip. All right. And we had it planned where we would take off right after church on a Sunday and get away, away for a few days in the heart of summer. And I don't know if you've heard this, but since the pandemic, campgrounds in the area and in the state, really, have been, uh, been hard to get reservations in. They're full all the time, and you just can't get in very easily. So Kim had really heard really good things about one certain campground, and she really wanted to go to it at the state park. And we kind of, she heard where it was located, so we looked, and the date we had available was free. There was a site available. We, we jumped on it and reserved it before figuring out where the park was. It was four hours away, by the way. Um, so we knew we needed to get ready to go as soon as we could, and miraculously, I got stuff together the night before. Don't know how. Um, I even loaded the refrigerator in our camper so it was ready to go. You camp your way, I'll camp my way. And so right as we were getting ready to leave, I noticed the refrigerator had not really kept up as much as it should. Things were cool-ish. Okay, hopefully it'll get better. No one got sick. So finally we got on the road. We started thinking about, as we were driving, just a couple miles out of town, we started remembering things we had forgotten, which is ridiculous considering how much we had packed. No biggie. Didn't forget anything important. Keep going. All right, 45 minutes into the trip now, camper gets a flat tire. Okay, remember those weeks of all 90 degree days? Yeah. So we pulled over, changed the tire, no biggie, went really easy. Kim actually said, wow, that went really smooth. (laughs) Well, you know where things went from there. So when I put the spare tire on, I noticed it could use a little bit more air. So we stopped at the next gas station, which has one of those pumps that still requires money, $2 and quarters to be exact, for a little squirt of air, but fine. Keep the family safe. Nothing I won't do. Okay, back on the road. Okay, remember, 90 degrees. Um, We're driving up the highway, and I'm thinking to myself, 
boy, it's really not as cool as in this truck as it used to be. And so I was trying to figure out how to break it to the rest of the family that the air conditioning may not be working really well, but I didn't have much of a time to do that because uh, the, the tire pressure monitor we have started beeping at me, and this truck that was passing me had a guy hanging out the window shouting something and pointing, which I guess is the universal sign for pull over. Once I finally found a shoulder that I could pull off on, I looked in the mirror to see all the rubber bouncing down the, down the road from what used to be the spare tire on the camper. So you're picturing this, right? I mean, here we are, middle day of a Sunday, parked on the side of a highway. Whole family is standing up on this gravel road beside the highway because they had finished the snacks that were in the truck. And remember, the air conditioner wasn't working. As I'm standing there, I'm noticing that something kind of smells where we are, and it's not me or the kids, because we hadn't camped yet, and I'm realizing that about six feet away from where the tire is flat, there's this probably week-old deer carcass laying in the side of the road, which explains the, the flies and the smell, and what I finally noticed were all the maggots under where I was changing the tire. My shoes still smell. No tow company could bring me a spare tire for a trailer, and as we're standing there, a storm comes along, which means we get back into the truck with no air conditioning and pouring down rain so no windows can go down. I can keep going, <laughs> because it didn't get better for a while. But I will just say that thanks to a random text I received from a member of this church at just the right time, at least it was the right time for me, not the right time for them. A very kind and generous family drove all the way from Cold Camp an hour and a half one way to deliver a spare tire so that three, af three hours after we parked on the side of the road, we could hobble our way to a different campground that was closer to where we were and spend the rest of our vacation. Now, do you notice something about this story? As I'm telling it, I'm smiling, right? And you're laughing, right? Do you think I was smiling that day? <laughs> Do you think my kids were laughing? You bet your britches they weren't. <laughs> now I know every, almost every single one of you probably has a similar story. I know for a fact that any of you who work regularly with vehicles or farm equipment has plenty of those stories. And I bet that given enough time, even you can tell some of those stories after the fact, even with a smile on your face. You might actually exaggerate some of the worst parts. I didn't exaggerate anything, just to let you know. But we know that there is something that is special and powerful about retelling our stories, even and often especially the worst parts of the stories that we have to tell. I could have spent some more time telling you about the good things that happened, the people who stopped by to try to help, the lady who invited us to her house for chicken, the people who, as we were texting, were trying to do anything in their powers to help us, the, the fun we did have at the new campground. But all the bad stuff makes for a better story, right? More fun to tell that way. But we're not the only ones who like to retell stories. We hear a little bit of that in our gospel reading today. Maybe you remember two weeks ago, I was talking about the gospel of Mark as a whole and how the writer likes to tell one story inside of another. Intercalation, we said, is what they call it, and that's what's happening with this flashback to uh, the beheading of John the Baptist in, be in between this larger story of Jesus sending his disciples. I'm not sure if that's a story we can look back and laugh about, but I mean, I think God is redeeming it somehow. But the other story that I wanted to think about and how it's retold is what happens in the book of Ephesians. I find this letter to be written in such a way that as I read it or as I hear it, my eyes just kind of glaze over. No offense to Brian. I mean, 
I really had to slow, I have to slow myself down to, to think about what Paul is trying to say to us. I have to read it over and over and over again. But I found that it, as you start hearing it again and again, you can see almost a vision of what God is up to and what God desires for this world. I wanted to look at verse 9, where God, it says, God has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to God's good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. As I, as I said, we like to play up a lot of things in our stories, and there is a word in the Greek original writing of this story that can only be described as epic. I think we have it on the screen. This is one Greek word, all right? I'm not even going to pretend I know how to say it. And in the version we have printed in our bulletin, this word is translated as gather up. It shows up, a version of it shows up one other time in Scripture where it says things are summed up. The first part of the word means again. The second part means head. And the rest of it talks about how God is actually a actively doing it. So kind of it means bringing things together under one head. Um, it's also been translated as to bring unity to bring to a head, as I said, to recapitulate, to retell, summarize. So with this word, Paul is telling us that when God gathers things up, God is summarizing or God is retelling the story, bringing about completion or unity to, what did it say? All things in heaven and earth. God is taking the stories that have caused us utter misery and pain and hurt and confusion, and God gathers them up and retells them in a way that brings about unity, that allows us to smile once again, in a way that finds a completion to the story. And that's awesome, isn't it? But even better is the reasoning behind why God is telling, retelling these stories. Again, it says, God has made known to us the mystery of his will according to God's good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him. It brings God pleasure. It's God's will. It's God's plan that our stories will be retold. And all things, all things will be brought to unity. All of human history, all of the broken and scattered pieces of this world, all of the fractured and painful parts of our life, all things will be gathered up in God through Jesus Christ. They will be retold, restored, renewed, reconciled, all in the same way that we have been redeemed through the power and work of Jesus Christ, having been, as Paul reminds us, forgiven of our sins and blessed with the richness of God's grace. I think the question for us is, do we believe this? Do we believe these words of Paul that we have been destined to be children of God, that we can receive this inheritance of grace and love? Do we believe that we, that, that you have been redeemed by Jesus, chosen by God, sealed by the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that this is what God wants in this world and what God wants for this world? I know we like to talk a lot about God's will and God's plan, and we like to wonder and try to figure out what those things are for us and, and try to solve that mystery of what God is doing around us. So I want to spend a little bit of time in, over the next few weeks in this letter to the Ephesians, thinking about what God is up to in this world. Because as I said, as I kept digging into this, these first few verses, it was opening up so much. We have to take a few detours in this adventure, like next week when we'll hear from uh, the kids about the week of VBS. 
But I hope that in the coming weeks we can have this opportunity to hear some of the ways that God's glory shines through this world. How God's desire is for love and unity and that how we are called, there's that word again, how we are called and chosen and gifted this opportunity to be part of God's great plan for the redemption and restoration of all creation. Which ultimately... I mean, you can probably agree with me that this is all a story worth telling over and over again. A story about the healing of us and the healing of this world. Thanks be to God. Amen. join our hearts and voices in prayer for the God who hears us, loves us, and knows the depths of our stories. Loving God, your hope for this world is is the care and unity of all your people. Join our stories, heal our hurts, and show us the love that only you can provide. We praise your glory, O God, and we thank you for all the blessings hope, and grace that you bestow upon us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Awesome creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Be present in the places where storms and other disasters have brought damage. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of those who speak your good news. Bring peace to the lands where chaos, division, and violence reign, especially in Afghanistan, Haiti, and all the places that are unnamed or forgotten. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence, guard the refugee and the immigrant, and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. 
heal the sick, and help us to slow the spread of the COVID pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of stories, we give thanks for the good news that you have given us to share. Be with us in this upcoming week of Vacation Bible School, that we may have a fun, safe, and successful week in telling your stories. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, and prophets who have died in the faith. We remember those in this community who have recently died. United with them as God's children, assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown amongst us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Hear now, O Lord, the prayer you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come and eat. Communion this morning will be at the stations at the front of the sanctuary. All are welcome. For those who are watching who would like to participate and uh, partake in communion this morning, I invite you now to take your bread. Hold it up as we say, this is the body of Christ given for you. And then take the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And all God's children said, Amen.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.